Hair. And this is Wolf. And this is us talking about yet another film that we really enjoyed, actually. Mm -hmm. And this movie, first of all, I really thought it was bold of them to re-release Civil War with all of Captain America's scenes cut out. Good. Goodbye, Captain America. She doesn't like him. I hate him. You know, she feels As the same a character. way. She feels the same way about Superman. Yeah, I hate Superman too. She only likes the bed boys. Oh, yes. Like me. Okay, baby. <laughs> yes, I am bad. Totally. Sometimes Back to Civil War. I cross the street, I don't even look both That's ways. a dirty lie. Back to Civil baby. War. So, uh, some of the highlights definitely for me was uh, the opening was oh, very yeah. tense. Yeah. Like, they... Oh, they from the get-go. They use in the opening, they use a lot of scenes of real clashes between riot rioters and police. And it's intercut with a very sort of nervous and not quite comfortable looking Nick Offerman, I think his name is. Nick Offerman. The president. The yeah. president who many will recognize from his previous role in Parks and Rec. Wait. Oh my god, she's face blind. I am, I didn't realize it was him. She's completely face blind. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Well. He's so old now. <laughs> no, I think they, they grade him up. Oh, okay, I was gonna say, he's so old now. Yeah, see, that's that's how you do it. Frankly, all this old person makeup looks terrible. Whenever they do old person makeup, it always looks bad. Just, just give them some some gray. Just, just yeah. go gray. That's all you need to do. Honestly, get he's supposed to be older. Yeah, you, you know. But beyond that, you were very fortunate to not notice it was him because for me it was. Yeah, I'm thinking Ron Swanson. <laughs> see the guy, but you know, and that's. That's a me problem. Obviously, the guy's a talented actor, and he plays this character. I didn't even recognize his voice, and he has really? a very like distinct voice. Yeah, I was. I well, okay. also I was well, kind of tired, so I was. He plays this 100%. character very well, and you can sort of feel, and it's the exact wrong tone. Like it's not the tone that you would want from like your president when yeah. the country's going. Yeah, it's all kind of like, God, what the fuck do I say? <laughs> type of shit. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oop. Yeah. And then of course, you know, he's delivering this message. Not really a speech, but he's delivering various messages throughout the film. And he always sounds very authoritative in those instances, but you know, you can tell that just off camera, he's, you know, yeah, because they a splice, sweaty mess. They splice it in where it's like this is supposed to be behind the scenes. Sort of in the beginning, yeah, yeah. you're seeing him sort of preparing his remarks, and yeah, in like so, a mirror. So from the opening, very strong opening. There were also things that I didn't like as much, and. That is in the first real scene that we get, like, with the rioters the riot, yeah. and the police. Did you notice that, too? Did you notice? Okay, so what I noticed is, like, there was a lot of, like, how would I put this? It was, like, wiggle fighting, you know? Oh, not where, real fighting, yeah. Like, where somebody's, like... Wee. Like trying to portray that they're like, you know, so they'll they'll like grab on to the person that they're supposed to be. Oh, but then kind of let go, and then just wiggle back and forth, yeah. like like they're pretending to be in a push pull. I swear, pull kind I of saw struggle. I saw someone go let, grab someone and then immediately let go of them. So I could tell that they were trying to kind of cut around it and like. 
not show that. I mean, maybe it was just one or two people who were not, but there Deep was wigglers. a real, yeah, they, they, there were some real wigglers who were just <laughs> like, it's like uh, when you see an amateurishly done play and someone's trying to portray like grabbing someone by the hair and you can tell that it's just the person you know um, whose hair is being grabbed is just sort of wiggling back and forth you know you could you can sort of you can sort of see that in that scene like if you're looking for it and you don't really even have to be looking for it you know it's very you know they try to cut very quickly and make the action look intense but you can see and so that was I'm sorry. An anomaly. I will say most of the action in the film is very well done. I'm so sorry, but the scene where they enter, they're introducing one of the main characters and she just gets bonked on the head. She's like, oh! It made me laugh. Because <laughs> um, it, yeah. it didn't look like she got actually hit on the head, at least to me. It know. didn't look like she got hit in the head. It looks like she got hit in the neck or the shoulder. But she's like, like on her head, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, she's like grabbing for her. Yeah. Head. Like she grabbed she at her head, but she didn't actually get hit on the head. She got get hit in the like shoulder. Ma- the I didn't area. notice that in particular, but I, I feel like that scene was it made like. made my life. <laughs> that scene was like very, I don't know what it was, but that scene just did not come together and look mm-hmm. convincing. And that's kind of bad because it's the first real like intense scene. it's the first like real scene, scene of the movie well it's not the first scene but it's the real in first action scene yeah of the movie is i guess what you know we're saying and yeah you want that one to be pretty strong <laughs> like you want to open wasn't. with a strong scene there was a lot of scenes in that movie that were really good with the action but a yeah. lot of them were one-on-one type of things well, i would say that that scene was an anomaly most of the action in the film is and there's not a lot of big massive riots or big yeah. massive protest like scenes but what it does well is show the sort of limited scale of like a well they show like a raid. civil war like a like the guerrilla warfare yeah of a civil war like the oh is the other thing i didn't quite understand did just florida secede so and I texas feel like, i feel like they were very careful not to draw any political lines so the film tries not to be super political yeah um so the idea is, is that there's a separatist movement in Florida, in Texas, and in California. Yeah, the three big states. <laughs> but also, like, California obviously leans one way very strong politically. Yeah. Texas leans the opposite way very strong politically. They do and, ask a lot, like, are you, what is, are you a United States citizen? Or not citizen, I, or... Are you with the United States or something like that? I forgot exactly. But every time they like see someone or they're talking to someone, they're usually like, are you with us? What side are you on? Uh, I, don't really, I only remember that from one scene, but there is one scene where that's very... Well, there was a scene before that with the... Um, what was he? He was trying to ask when with the raid, like, what side are you guys on? And they just wouldn't answer in the beginning of that raid. Right. So, okay, I was going to get to that, too, because I was talking about, okay, first of all, I want to say I really enjoyed the film. Yes. <laughs> Second of all, I want to say there were problems with the writing. A little bit. <laughs> In my opinion, like, so there was an interview that Denny Villeneuve, who made Dune 2 and who yeah. made Dune 1, and who made... Who's- um, was he the director of this or was... No. He wasn't the director of this one. But okay, so what he said in this interview that that a lot of people uh, sort of latched on to was he, he mentions like that he doesn't really like a lot of dialogue and that he thinks that film has been negatively impacted by television. 
where yes. you have all this dialogue, dialogue monologue, and especially because you have to fill your time, and especially quippy yes. dialogue. So there was a lot of those exchanges, particularly in one scene. Um, they could have used a little bit more tension with a sniper rifle, where where one of the main characters is acting kind of out of character, and about Jess? this is no the male. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I have so, no idea. <laughs> um, one of the two of the characters are photojournalists. One's a reporter. Um, well, there's another reporter in there. There's but two reporters. Two but reporters, two photojournalists, and one the of the girls reporters. Are for photojournalists. This is the weirdest thing. And what's funny is they they had shown this reporter, um, sort of being able to blend in and work with uh these militias before and unlike that in this scene he's just being completely obtuse yeah. and these guys who are busy having a war yeah and he's asking them all, all they're trying questions. to read and, they're and he like, said hey i'm pressed by the way and then they return it with this like so yeah i guess i noticed that by the big press well, yeah, he was thing exactly. That it says on the side of he was like, "Oh, that's car. why it says press on your car." Got it, basically. Well, but he says it in a way that it's like it feels very like I don't know. I just didn't well, it feels like sarcastic, that one. but it's not like, just sarcastic. But it feels like too clever by half. Yeah, it feels like kind of like it shouldn't have been in there, right? And there's a there's. I don't want to say there's a lot of dialogue like that, but there are certain scenes where, and um, there's at one point where they go to a store and there's a neighborhood that's sort of, and it's showing the contrast of, yeah. of how um, some areas are almost totally unaffected by the Civil War. But and that's so they not walk, true. Well, we won't, we won't go into all of that, but... The point that I'm making is with the cashier, they're like talking to the cashier and they're like, haven't you guys heard of what's going on? And she basically says, we try not to pay attention. Yes, but we don't care, basically. But the, the way the dialogue is structured in that scene is like, She's talking, like, from the perspective of, like, everyone in this town. And it just comes off really unnatural. It's, like, yeah. not how people talk. Like, nobody just talks, like... She also said it, like, super fast. She was like, yes, but we're here. Like, it was like, okay, I guess that was your dialogue. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's just... People don't talk like from the perspective of an entire town. And they don't say, like, we and just mean like the everyone whole entire around. Town. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was that was weird. It, it, was, it was very forced in that particular scene. That didn't feel natural. It also felt... There were a couple other things that didn't feel natural with the like dialogue. My whole thing. And I feel like I'm just going to say, like, I feel like less is more when it comes to dialogue. And that's something that, that Denny Villeneuve was trying to say about like Dune. Dune and Dune 2. And just, just his approach to filmmaking in general is trying to say more with less. And not having the whole story revolve around people exchanging information in the form of quips and dialogue and, and bullshit yeah, you know that's kind of how I was on the book so I appreciate that of him <laughs> right well I mean we're not talking about that I but, know I but know. the point is it's it's a broader statement about like how films have kind of been negatively impacted in some ways by and they kind of they kind of by, just give out information just like that you know because right two of the photo the, the two photojournalists were both like yeah my parents are just pretending it's not happening just both of them okay that that was something else i was gonna say so one of the photojournalists she says 
like, oh, my dad, he's on his farm out in Missouri. Missouri. He's on his farm out in Missouri pretending this doesn't happen. And then she's asking the other girl about her background. And and the other girl says, Same, my but parents in Colorado. Are, no, she says, my parents are also on a farm, except out in Colorado. Yeah. And they're also pretending this doesn't happen. I was like, wow, is there like a buy one, get one deal on this backstory? <laughs> like, can we maybe like, really? Okay. Whatever. Why did they both? What are the odds? Why like, did they both have to have the same the same literal background? In a lot of ways, the writing leaves a little bit to be desired in certain areas, especially like characters exchanging information, dialogue, that kind of stuff. Um, in other sure. ways, like they did a lot of things pretty well. Yeah, I would say uh, in terms of how they structured the story and there's a lot of sort of um realistic i would say uh storytelling as far as like how would something like this unfold in the united states it felt not real real it felt like this this is what actually could happen it's the chaos it's the instability Uh and it's the it's the way that things play out when things fall apart, you know? And there, there were some really interesting things with, like, well, what would you do if, like, money wasn't worth anything? Like, yeah. what, what would you do? How would that, you exchange? That was, and that, that was kind of inconsistent, I like, too. Yeah, I, I was going to say though. I like that because I just remember the gas station scene. Right. Well, we won't get into the whole... To get you a sandwich. Well, we won't get into exactly the scenes and what what happens, but you know we don't want to ruin the. That's the film true, movie. but because we do recommend this movie, yes, I, go see I it. recommend it. I know that it's, Cat recommends. It's the first weekend that it's out in theaters. Go see it. That's right. This is its first weekend. We are tired as heck right now. Just a little Ooh, behind yeah. the scenes. We got home very late from this one on a Saturday. It is currently Sunday now. No, it is Sunday. So. Definitely worth it. Definitely worth watching. And we need more movies like this. We need more movies. This one, it's very... um, it's not a kid's movie. It's it is not. It is rated R. Film. It's rated R. And it's not based on anything. It is an original product. This is not a sequel. This is not the prequel to Marvel's Captain America Civil War. God. This is not if this was a spin-off. That's insane. This is not based on a novel. This is An actual movie that's just a movie. It's quite good. Who would have thought that they can make a movie without, you know... Having a reference. You know, without spinning it off from a brand of cereal or a... Now I want a Frosted Flakes movie. Tony the Tiger movie. Let's make it happen. What about a dark, brooding Tony the Tiger movie? Definitely. Batman, Tony the Tiger. You want to know how I got these stripes? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyways, see Civil War. Great oh movie. Gosh. Count Chocula versus um, Tony the, the Count Tiger. from Sesame Street. No, Tony the Tiger. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. Now we've got her on like a thing. And it's, I'm it's very not... tired. Okay. Listen, hit that like button. Go see hit this that movie. Subscribe button. Ring the bell. Comment. Yeah, and we need more comments. Comment. Yeah, we want to know what you guys are thinking. Are you lonely? You want friends? We'll heart your comment. We will. Like and heart. Because we do heart your comment. 
We do. We heart all the comments. You. Even if it's just, you guys are stupid. It'd be like, heart. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. That just about does it. Thanks for stopping. Bye. Bye.